Grade 6 math number 5.9, percent of a number. I'm going to help show you how to find the percent of a number. Proportional reasoning is also called proportionality. It's used in math and physics to show the relation between two quantities, and we can use this to help us find the percent of a number. We did this in the other video. Emma's rent is 40% of her monthly budget, so her rent, if her rent is $800, her budget is 2000 This is why. If 40 over 100 is equal to 800, then all we have to do is figure out what is 10%. Well, we divided this by 4 to get 10%, so we can divide this by 4 to get 200. Now we know that 10% is 200, so 100% must be 2000. See? That's proportional reasoning. Tala's Bakery uses about 8,000 pounds of flour each week. 40% of that flour is used only to bake bread. The rest she uses for other stuff, muffins and cakes and stuff. So how many pounds of flour does she use each week to bake bread? I'm going to use proportional reasoning. There's 8,000 pounds of flour. That's going to be our 100%. 40% of it is used to bake bread. If 100% is 8,000, we need to find 40% of the 8,000. 40% is the same thing as 40 over 100, right? Well, let's break this 40% down to 10%, and then we'll find out what 10% is of 8,000. 10% of 8,000 is 8,000 times 1 tenth. It's 8,000 divided by 10, and that turns out to be 800. Well, 40% is equal to 4 times 10%, so 4 times 800 is 3,200 pounds of flour each week for the bread. See? We split the 40% into 4 to get 10%, so to mul it back, multiply it back to 40%, we had to multiply it by 4. This was 10%, we multiply that by 4, see, and get 3,200. Proportional reasoning. Or we could multiply 40% of 8,000 pounds of flour, we write the percent as a decimal. 40% equals 0 0.40, and then we multiply the decimal. We could even just multiply 0 0.40, right? But let's do it their way. 8,000 times 0 0.40. We have 0 times all of these, so that gives us four zeros. Now we're on this space. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 0 is this 0. And now 4 times 8 is 32. We draw a line, we add them all up, and we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and 3. We count the hops in the decimal equation, 1, 2. We put that many into the product, 1, 2, and we get 3,200. See? If we have 17% of 200, we turn the 17% into a decimal of 0 0.17, because 17% 17 means 17 hundredths, right? We multiply the 0 0.17 times 200. 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 2 is 14. Now it's the 1's turn, so we're going to be in this column. 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 2 is 2. We add them all up, and we get 3, 4, 0, 0. There's 1, 2 hops in the equation, so we put 1, 2 hops in the product. Our answer is 34. Wasn't that easy? What if there's a decimal point in our percentage? Well, do you remember in the other video we did, we I think it was 0.5%, and we turned it into a fraction? All we have to do is remember that whenever you see a percentage, whether there's a decimal point there or not, it means of 100. So we can put 0.4 over 100, because that's what percent means. It means of 100. And then to get rid of the decimal point, we just multiply both by 10, the 0.4 and the 100. That'll give us 4 thousandths. See? Now you know how we got the 4 thousandths there. All right? Four one thousandths of 600 is now what we're trying to find. We write it as a decimal, 0 0.004 of 600. We do our multiplication, and we multiply all the zeros together and the four and the six together, and this is what we come up with, and we, we drop our zeros, drop our four, drop our two, drop our other zero. We count the hops, one, two, three. Count the hops in the product, one, two, three, 
and we know the decimal point goes back into the product at 2.4, right there. So 0.4% of 600 is 2.4, see? What if there's a decimal point in the whole? This is the amount of the whole, okay? Just like the 40% of 8,000, this was the whole amount of flour. This is the whole amount that we're trying to find 0.4% of. And 25% of this whole amount, we turn the 25% into 0.25 as a decimal, and we multiply it to that decimal. 48.8 times 2.5. 5 times 8 is 40. We carry the 4 and put the 0 down. And then 5 times 8 is 40 again, plus the 4 we carried over is 44. We carry over one 4 and put the other one down. And then 5 times 4 is 20, plus that 4 is 24. So we have 2, 4, 4 is 0. Now it's the 2's turn. So we're going to be in this column. 2 times 8 is 16. We carry the 1. It's way up here. And put the 6 down. 2 times 8 is 16, plus that 1 is 17. We carry the 1 and put the 7 down. And then 2 times 4 is 8, plus that 1 up there is 9. We put it there, draw our line, we add, we get 0, 4 and 6 is 10, we carry the 1 and put the 0 down, 7 and 4 is 11, plus 1 more is 12, we carry the 1 and put the 2 down, 9, 10, 11, 12. We count the hops in the equation, 1, 2, 3, because there's 1 here and 2 here, so that's 3 total, so we put 3 hops in the product, 1, 2, 3, our answer is 12.2, see? So you can turn the percentage into a decimal and multiply to the amount of the whole, okay? 20% of 100, you multiply 0 0.20 times 100. You count the hops in the equation, you put that many in the product, and our answer is 20. So just remember to count the hops in the decimal equations. If you don't, you're going to end up with the wrong answer. You just count the hops and put that many hops into the product whether there's only hops for one number or if there's hops for both you count them all and that's how many you put into the product okay so that's not that hard is it that's how you find the percent of a number that's how you use it proportional reasoning to find it and that's how you use multiplication to find it all right i think you can do this it's not really that hard it's just multiplying decimals isn't it all right keep trying keep up the good work and i'll see you next video bye